Thank you for joining us for our online Bible study at Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Good evening, beloved saints of God. I am thankful to the Lord that he has allowed us to come together again in the study of his word. As you are well aware, we have been studying out of 1 John and we're in chapter 2. Last week we left off at verse 17 of 1 John chapter 2. And get your Bibles. I hope that you already have your Bibles to, and already have turned to 1 John chapter 2. And we will begin at verse 18. If the Lord be pleased, we'll cover over to verse 29 of 1 John chapter 2. We'll begin at verse 18 and proceed over to verse 29. In piggybacking off last week's lesson for continuity to understand the seriousness behind what the Apostle John is teaching those who God has assembled to hear the instructions that John gives to the little children, the, the assembly that God has put together. You know, last week, John encouraged the little children to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And he stated that if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and then John goes on to encourage and say and teach and the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever and as he closes in verse 17 and proceeds into verse 18 he says the will of God stands endures forever this is important this is serious because going into verse 18 I stated on last week I wanted to spend a, a few moments dealing with the subject matter that John deals with in verse 18 he says little children now understand the little children is making reference to the body of believers those who without a shadow of a doubt believe that the God of the Bible is their God those who are of a spiritual belief that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior the children of God the little children that John is making reference to are the stump down not shaky, not wavering, those who are believers. This is going to make sense even more so as we venture into this lesson. He says, little children, it is the last time. The word time means hour. It is the last hour. John is closing out what's known as the apostolic age. And what that means is the apostolic age being closed out the Apostle John is the last living apostle out of the 12 apostles he is the last one and so as John looks at what's taking place around him he's stating that it is the last time it is the last hour because John sees as those of us who are the believers the real believers of Jesus Christ seeing today there is such a hypocrisy and there is such an apostasy meaning that there is an abandonment and a renunciation of the word of God there are those who are moving away from God's word there is utter defection people are defecting from God's word departing from God's word people are revolting and rebelling against the truth of God's word there are those who are supposedly instructors of the word, but they compromise and they water down. And that is a revolt. That is a departure. That is apostasy. That is a renunciation of the truth of God's word. 
So what John is faced with at this time in his life, at this hour, is that apostasy that's taking place as well as in this day. We are living in perilous times. Second Timothy 3 and 1 says, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Days that are full of danger. Days that are full of risk. And what does that mean to the believer? There are those who are intentionally seeking to deceive, to distort, to twist, to take away, to renounce, to cause those who are believers in Christ to defect, to take down, to compromise. Who are these people? They are known as the Antichrist. He says, little children, it is the last hour. We have to look at that from a standard mind, frame of mind. It's the last time, last hour, perilous times, risky times, dangerous times. He says, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now, he says, are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time, it is the last hour. John is proclaiming, he is proclaiming what he was dealing with at that time. This is what we are, we are proclaiming that's going on today. The Antichrist shall come even now. Are there many, catch this, Antichrist with an S, plural. The Antichrist shall come and even now, this day, this time that we live in, many Antichrist have come whereby we know it is telling, showing us that we are in the last hour, the last time. Time as we know it is winding up. In the previous passage, up in verse 17 of, of 1 John chapter 2, it says, And the world passeth away. This world is passing away. The lust thereof, our desires that had driven us in the past, is passing away. It's showing all that we have known before is passing away. The times that we're living in, all the recklessness, all the danger, the risk of coming, of our, coming out of our house, of being shot down, or being caught up in something that, that's, that's, that could harm us, is showing us that the Antichrist has come and many antichrist plural has come even now antichrist they are the false teachers they are those who are deceivers and i want to take my time and make this clear because for the people of god the bible says if it were possible the very elect of god those chosen by god would be deceived if it were possible but for those of us who are the elect of God, the chosen of God, and that's why I started out. This lesson is for the stumped down believers of Jesus Christ. Because those who are believers in the God of the Bible and the believers of Jesus Christ, it is not possible for them to be deceived. They, there might be a thought put in our mind. But what we will always refer back to, what is written. That is why John keeps re repeating, it is written, it is written, it is written. For us, we must always go back to what is written in what we believe, the word of God. Not theory, not opinionated views, what's written. God's word is true. And this is why we refer back to it. It says, know that it is the last time, the last hour, the Antichrist, these false teachers, those who were deceived. The adversaries and opposers of Christ, they oppose the deity of Christ. They oppose the incarnation that Christ came in the flesh. They oppose the office and the authority of Christ. They say God, Christ is not one with God the Father. They oppose God himself. They oppose, I'm talking about the Antichrist, the deceivers. They are in opposition to what God has put in place. That's why people can just raise sand over nothing. I believe in God's divine providence. I believe everything that takes place in this world, God orchestrates. 
The wind does not blow unless God has ordained for the wind to blow. A leaf cannot shake on a tree unless God has ordained for that leaf to shake at the, on that tree at that appointed time. God is in complete control of everything. The Antichrist is up in opposition and the Antichrist plural, those who are many who are deceivers, they oppose God, his plans, his purposes. They oppose God's people. When you stand for this truth, be prepared. I'm talking about true, stomp down believers of Jesus Christ. When you stand for this truth, be prepared for opposition. Be prepared for those to come against you. Jesus Christ himself, who is the word, look how much opposition he faced in his day. John is feeling this in this time that he's living. Remember, the, the apostolic age is coming to an end. The apostolic means those who were with Christ, who visually saw Christ, who visually saw a resurrected Savior. An apostle today, let me teach this real quick because I'm going to get back. And apostle, those who refer to themselves as apostles today are not on par with the apostles of this time. The word apostle, from where we stand, when you hear that word apostle, it's messenger. It's not some supernatural being that people put on a pedestal. That's false teaching. Anytime you go against the grain of the word of God, it's false teaching. And people who will try to pump themselves and make themselves look impressive as if they are the top notch. They are this. That's pride. They're looking for titles. They're looking for recognition. So you hear these pretty people, talk, that's the apostle such and such. Apostle today just means messenger. John was the last living apostle at this time. When he died, the apostolic age came to a close. So apostle merely means messenger. There is not a super chief human being that has been supernaturally given apostolic power. It's a messenger. It's full of pride when they try to take it anywhere else. And they're deceivers. They're deceivers. Know this. They are deceivers. He says, verse 19. I impressed upon in verse 18 because a lot of Pastors and churches have gotten verse 19 wrong. Look what it says. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. I've heard pastors and teachers preach when someone leaves their church and goes somewhere else. They'll come back and, re and refer to this scripture. They were not of us. <laughs> but they were not, they went out from us, but they were not of us. That's a person being bitter because someone has left that fellowship. If God has saved an individual and that person is led to go to another fellowship and worship and praise my prayer is if a person leaves the fellowship of greater friendship and they are believers, I pray that God will plant them somewhere where they can receive true instructions from the word of God. But I'm not going to get mad and teed off because they left and said they went out from us, but they were not of us because I have twisted the scriptures because of my anger. When it says this in verse 19, you got to remember it's referring back to the Antichrist. There were those, and there are those today, who are in the midst of the ecclesia, the body of Christ. They are not true believers. They are, in, they are, they are sheep in wolves' clothing. They are wolves in sheep clothing. They give the appearance that they are sheep. But in reality... They're the Antichrist. They're deceivers. They're opposers. So when you get to verse 19, 
It's saying those who were in the midst of us. It says they went out from us, the Antichrist. They were here, but they were deceived and persuaded to renounce Jesus Christ. They were persuaded to denounce God as the supreme ruler. They went out from us, but they were not of us. They weren't believers. They were not believers as we believe. They might have been here 10 years, 15 years, but all of a sudden they believe in another God. They believe in another way. They believe in, in I can deal with some of the scriptures, but all of the scriptures aren't applicable. That's false. Because the word of God is true from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. So those that is saying here, it's not someone who's left friendship and went to another church that's a true believer. This is talking about the Antichrist. When he says they, that's the Antichrist, went out from us, those who are deceivers who renounced the truth of God's word. But they were not of us, for if they had been of us of, as a believer, they would no doubt, ain't no doubt, they would have continued with us on this journey, glorifying Christ, worshiping the God of the Bible, worshiping the God who they said has delivered them through Jesus Christ. But those who renounce that, those who go in opposition to that, the Bible says again, it is no doubt they would no doubt have continued with us if they believe this. But they went out, 19 says, that they might be made manifest, they might be revealed that they were not all of us. That everybody who makes that profession, and I, I, I preached on this a couple of weeks ago, a profession is a confession and an acknowledgement. And in our profession, we confess our guilt, our sin, our need for a Savior, Jesus Christ. And we acknowledge that the only one who can save us from our guilt and our sin is Jesus Christ. We'll see that down here in verse 22. But for those who left, it says here, they went out that they might be made revealed, it might be shown or revealed that they were not all of us. All you have to do is look at a person's actions. Listen to what they say. The Bible says, watch as well as pray. In the book of James, the Bible says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Watch, listen, pay attention. It'll show you if that person is of Christ or if that person is in opposition to Christ. Look at verse 20. It says, but ye have an unction. That word unction is an anointing from the Holy One. The Holy One is Jesus Christ. Ye know all things. When it says all things, we understand by the unction or the indwelling spirit of the Holy One. That's the Holy Spirit that Christ has given us to give us discernment of all things. Those who come our way, I'm telling you, our Savior has given us the tools and everything we need to go through this world, this dark world, this world that is passing away and to see what's real and what's not. To see who is real and who is not. That comes back again by what is written in the Word of God. Again, John is telling his audience, my little children, as the spiritual father of this assembly, John is teaching. As the spiritual father of friendship, I, as much as God would allow, I want to teach God's people right. But ye have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One, Jesus Christ. And ye know, ye understand all things. And the things that we don't comprehend at that time, search the scriptures. That's why we're studying the word of God. So we will come into the knowledge of what's right and what's wrong. Who is right and who is wrong. The word of God is always going to validate what's right. The word of God is always going to validate who is right. You don't have to get in an argument with anybody. Those who come in opposition to what your stand is, just go to the word of God. That's the importance of studying the Word of God. You can't do it with an opinion. You can't do it with your thoughts. 
It has to be from the word of God. This is where our knowledge comes from. And it's from the unction, the anointing from the Holy One. That's Jesus Christ. Thank God for Jesus Christ. And he gives us the understanding of all things that we need to know. Here he goes in verse 21. John says, I have written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. He said, I'm writing because you know the truth. I'm not writing because you don't know. He says, it's not me who's giving it to you. It's the unction of the Holy Spirit. When God's Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ indwells into a believer and is in our hearts and our soul, we know when someone is trying to deceive us. God, through his Holy Spirit, will show that this person is trying to deceive you. This person is in opposition to the word of God. He says again, I have written, John says, unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it. It's not that you don't know the truth. If the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you know the truth. He says, and that no lie is of the truth. No falsehood. I'm, I'm at a point, I know I'm on my way to glory. And I'm at a point in my life as a believer in Jesus Christ. I just don't accept anything that anybody says to me. If it's not in accordance to the word of God, I don't care person been, been in church 100, 100 years. If it's not true and what's written, you just can't tell me anything. I'm just not going to fall prey for anything. Because I'm going to seek the scriptures. I'm going to look at God's word. I'm going to see, does that align with scripture? I encourage, this is why we're going verse by verse. This is why we study the Bible verse by verse. Those who were here at Friendship for two and a half years, we studied the book of Acts first by verse to see what thus saith the Lord by the unction, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We get into the scriptures. We don't go off the thoughts of me. My mind is finite. God's word is infinite, has infinite wisdom. So we go by what is written. And so you just, no person just can't walk up to me and tell me anything because the Antichrist, these false teachers, these false prophets, they're all over the place. I don't just turn on the TV and just because this person has thousands of people in attendance, that does not make them knowledgeable. You, you had asked the Lord to give you an unction, an anointing from the word of God to discern if this is truth or if this is a lie. Because notice it says again, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it. And that no lie, no falsehood is of the truth. They don't go hand in hand. Verse 22, who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, that rejects, refuses, a person can't acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Savior. That person is a liar. They are the Antichrist. They are in opposition. If they can't acknowledge the divinity of, of Jesus Christ, that he's one with the Father, they're, uh, they're a liar. Point blank. Again, who is a liar? But he that denieth, rejects, refuse, refuses that Jesus is the Christ. He, look at the Bible, calls him. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Explicitly clear. He is Antichrist. Anybody that rejects or renounces or opposes who the Word of God says Christ is and who God the Father is, they are the Antichrist. And when you teach this and there are those who are amongst you and leave you, it's going to manifest and show, oh, I see who you are. Call them who they are. They're lying. They're not standing on truth. I don't care who it is. When God gives you, you remember we were talking back over, there were levels of, of spiritual maturity in 13 and 14. You have the seasoned, mature Christian. Then you had the younger ones who were less seasoned and mature. And then you had the babes. But the seasoned and mature Christians, they don't just fall for anything. And then the young ones, God has said through the word of God, he's giving them strength to overcome the wicked one. And the babes are being brought up to be instructed, to be taught, to be strong in the Lord and power his might. That when the Antichrist, Christ who are present now, 
will come in opposition to who Christ is, we stand for the truth and stand against these liars. Notice it says, verse 23, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. If whoever rejects or refuses who Jesus Christ is, whoever says he's not one with the Father, that he was not born of a virgin, that he did not come in the flesh, that if they make a statement that he's just a prophet, that's denying, that's rejecting who he is. The Bible says the same hath not the Father. God the Father is not their God. He says, but on the contrary, contrast, he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. That word he that acknowledges, that word acknowledge means to give thanks and to confess. If you believe with your, in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, thou shalt be saved. And in our confession, we give thanks because we are guilty. It took Jesus, a Savior, to save us from the guilt of our sin. It says, he that acknowledge, give thanks and confess who we are. We are who we are by the grace of God. The Bible says the Son, he that acknowledges the Son, thank God, hath the Father also. God the Father, who is sovereign, who is in complete control, is the one who's governing our lives. The one who is in control of us. He is the one who is taking care of us, sustaining us. Verse 24, let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have, if that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also, also shall continue in the Son and in the Father, meaning we will persevere. That the Lord is keeping us, He's sustaining us, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing, there's no one that can separate us. From who God is in our life We persevere you all In this world, in this age, in this last time We still press on And to end, in the end of Christ Those who are in opposition to Christ Those who are defectors Those who might have been a good friend of ours Might have been a family member But if they denounce Jesus Christ We still press on As much as it might hurt us to the core of our being We press on Because we acknowledge Jesus Christ is Lord. So it says again in verse 24, Let that therefore abide, remain in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. We press on, y'all. Look at verse 25. This is the promise that he, God, the God that we believe in through Jesus Christ, had promised us by his divine Acknowledgement, he's given us eternal life. See, that's why we don't get caught up in this world. That's why we don't get caught up in, in, in people. That's why we don't get caught up in lies. We have eternal life, you all. That are, if you're a believer, a stomp down believer, as I started out, a stomp down believer, that means something. We got to leave this place. And I said on last week, this world is not our home. Whether you are saved or unsaved, you're going to get out of here. You, we, you and I are going to leave this world. We either leave this world as a believer in Jesus Christ, acknowledging him as Lord and Savior, or we leave this world in opposition, denying and rejecting him. And in doing so, I told you the immortal, eternal words will be stated to those who don't believe. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So yeah, this world is not our home, whether you're a believer or unbeliever. We have that promise as believers. We have eternal life. These things, verse 26 says, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Those who are trying to seduce you, trying to deceive you. John said, I'm writing this, little children. I'm writing this, babes. I'm writing this to you, uh, seasoned saints. I'm, I'm writing this to you, young, strong, vibrant Christians who believe wholeheartedly in Jesus Christ, there are going to be those who will try to deceive you. When it says seduce you, these things I write unto you concerning them, the Antichrist, that will try to deceive you. 
Look at verse 27. Catch this. I'm moving pretty fast, I know, because I'm trying to finish this out. It's a lot. It's a lot. Might have to revisit, but it's a lot. Catch verse 27. Very important. But the anointing, that goes back over to verse 20. The auction, the anointing which ye have received have been given of him, him whom? The Holy One, back over in verse 20. Let me read verse 20. But ye have an unction, an anointing from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Verse 27. But the anointing, the unction, which you have received, been given of him, the Holy One, Jesus Christ, abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. Now you say, well, uh, Pastor Williams, why do we need you? Understand this. It's not talking about me. John is teaching his assembly as he's being inspired of God. Remember, we're talking about those who are deceivers. Remember, in verse 26, it said, These things I write, John says, as he's inspired unto you concerning them that try to deceive you. Well, when it says in verse 27, you need not that need not that any man teach you is talking about those who will seduce you those who will try to deceive you those who will tell you a lie rather than the truth get away from them you don't need those individuals and as God gives you the discerning spirit and give you the understanding of knowing all things he's going to show you who is trying to deceive you who is trying to instruct you wrong? I always challenge my people. I said, follow me in the scriptures. As I'm teaching and preaching, go with me in the scriptures. Just don't go off of my word. God has put a mandate on me to rightly divide the word of truth, not to deviate. And there are those who will deviate for their own whatever they want to receive, their own reward. So it says here, that ye need not that any man teach you is talking about those who will try to present a lie to you but as the same anointing teaches you unction of all things and is truth and is no lie and even as it had taught you ye will you shall abide in Jesus Christ the Holy One I, 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 I'm big on us studying the word of God to expose the word of God as written and we're going through a season with this world pandemic and we're not having a Bible study as we have in the past and Sunday school as we haven't had in the past. But it is important to study the word of God in Bible study, in Sunday school, in your own individual study and asking the Lord, before you go read the word of God, pray that the Lord will give you an anointing and unction to understand what the word of God is saying. And then if you don't get it, that's where your pastor, the one who is the overseer of your soul, I'm talking about a real pastor, a true pastor, who will open the scripture and rightly divide the word of truth to give understanding concerning all things. So many have, are being taught by Antichrist, those who are false, those who are not real, and they're not teaching the truth of God's word, and they're deceiving intentionally. They will get their reward. But as God gives you discernment, that's a lie. That's not real. That's not the truth. Don't sit under, sit under, don't sit under garbage. Don't sit under non-truth. Don't sit under lies. We need the truth. The Bible said the truth shall set you free. We need the truth of God's word. And so this is important in studying, diving in, digging in the scriptures to get that understanding, that knowledge Look at verse 28 and 29. And now, John says, he closes out chapter 2. He says, and now, little children, those who God has assembled, he said, abide in him, abide in Jesus Christ, remain in the Savior, remain diligently in the things of God, abide in him that when he shall appear, that's the Holy One he's talking about, when Jesus shall appear, we may have confidence we've been dealing with hope hope is the confident expectation that Jesus Christ will is in Jesus Christ our reliance is in Jesus Christ and we know we believe the scripture he is coming back it says we may have confidence 
and not be ashamed when he shall appear before him at his coming that we will be steadfast and won't be ashamed won't fear won't our confidence won't shake our faith won't waver our hope won't become less our expectation will be solid in Christ when he returns because if we are still on this earth when he returns we're looking for his return but I'm going to tell you something, the Antichrist, those who are in opposition, when Jesus returns and they're still on this earth, they're going to run to the mountains. They're going to run and hide. They're going to kill. Whereas we'll say, he is our Savior, he is our Lord. They are going to flee and try to get away because they're the Antichrist. But for us, we don't fear, we won't be ashamed. That's why Romans 1 and 16 say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew and then to the to the Gentile, to the Greek. And Romans 10 and 10 says it this way. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This is leading us into verse 29. If ye know that he is righteous. If you understand that he is righteous. Ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Everyone who's, who's practicing we're in, we have a saying here, we're in rehearsal. We're in rehearsal. So every day, do we get it right all the time? No. But by the anointing and the unction of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, he will convict us and let us know where we're wrong. He will show us when there's someone trying to deceive us. And again, Romans 10 and 10, 11 says, With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, What is written? Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, be put to shame. So when he comes back, beloved, when he comes back, our confidence is intact. Our hope is solid. Our faith is true. Our expectation of what the Lord said in his return is what we stand on. And those who are the Antichrist, they will flee and hide, but you can't get away. There's a song saying, you can't hide. You can't hide. Jesus Christ, who is God, one with the Father, he's omniscient. He knows everything. He knows what people are trying to hide. He knows who the Antichrist and Antichrists are. He knows who are the liars. He knows who the deceivers are. You can't hide. You can't hide. You can't hide behind the things of this world. He created the world. He is the one who said, let there be. And everything that he spoke came into existence. Jesus Christ is one with the Father. Don't be ashamed of who he is in your life. Stand boldly. The Bible says we come before the throne of God boldly, not arrogantly, but boldly, confident, because our hope is in Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the holy one, our Savior, our Lord. Hey, when there are those who oppose what your stand is, it'll be manifested, it'll be shown who they are. But when they are, show opposition, you show steadfastness. When they show defiance, you, 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 you show your resistance to them and that your loyalty is to Christ. When there are those who come in opposition to the truth of God's word and they are liars, seeking attention, seeking uh, acknowledgement and reward we acknowledge Jesus Christ and we will acknowledge him till he comes back till he takes us off this earth beloved do not be consumed with the affairs of this world don't be entangled the Bible says with the affairs of this world ask the Lord Jesus Christ who is Lord of Lord King of Kings ask him by the indwelling and the unction of the Holy Spirit to give us understanding so when there will be those who will come to deceive us we will look them in the eye and tell them get thee behind me Satan they will have to go because we stand on the foundation and our belief which is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone pray with me Father thank you for the instructions of your word I pray, pray that your word was made clear and it was given with clarity and understanding. And I pray, Lord, those 
who are listening to these lessons that you by the unction and the anointing of the Holy One, the Holy One being Christ, will give understanding that we will stand on what is written, that we will stand on the scriptures, that we will stand on the truth of your word. Don't we, we, we don't renounce, we don't take down, we don't compromise. We call a lie a lie and we stand on the truth with this God's word. Thank you, Lord, for that boldness and thank you for that confidence and thank you for that hope, that, 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 that confident expectation in Jesus Christ. Through Christ Jesus, we can do all things because it is Jesus Christ who gives us the strength. Thank you for this lesson. Bless these, your little children. And forever keep our eyes steadfast on Jesus Christ. It's in his name, the name of Jesus, that we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us for our online Bible study at Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, 914 Park Avenue, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37403. Come and join us at Greater Friendship, where we are united in Christ's word, love, and service.